Greetings to all of you today. So happy and thankful to God to be present with you one more time. We do give his name honor and reverence and thank him for this opportunity. I pray that all is well with each of you and that you're experiencing God's blessings as I am. We look forward to this time each week and I know that you do as well. I want to thank all of you that are regulars that, that share and those of you that are House of God members and others that join in on a weekly basis. We appreciate you so very much uh, for your, your time that you spend in these sessions. Let me open by saying this. I am excited, uh, House of God here. We are embarking on our annual district meetings that will convene across the country over the next uh, month or more. So I'm looking forward to that. I know that uh, you are as well in the various districts throughout our country. I uh, look forward to seeing you, look forward to being with you, and I know our superintendents are making ready for that, and all of those that will be hosting these district meetings uh, for uh, our geographical locations around the country. So look forward to seeing you there. Also, we thank God for this very special time that we're in. We celebrated Passover as, uh, as we've been talking about over a number of sessions. And we're in that period after Passover uh, where Jesus Christ is resurrected from the dead and spending 40 days uh, making himself visible and being witnessed by those that were part of his inner circle and also part of his following. It is a very, very important time. I've been talking about it. I hope you appreciate the fact that uh, the plan of salvation uh, didn't happen by accident. Uh, everything that's a part of it in terms of Jesus Christ uh, was prophesied, uh, was in God, on God's agenda uh, well before what we call the New Testament today. So the prophets were prophesying and, and telling the good news of the birth of Jesus Christ and the plan of salvation centered around Jesus Christ. So when Christ came on the scene, those great prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah, and even in books that we don't associate uh, with uh, speaking of the advent of Christ, even in Genesis and Psalms, they speak to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, even the book of Jonah, in a very prophetic way, uh, speaks to uh, Jesus Christ. So we've been looking at this period after his resurrection. I know people have finished celebrating and, and gone on about their business, but if you go back in time, Christ is still walking around in his resurrected body. Uh, he did that for 40 days. So we have uh, a couple of more weeks left uh, before he ascends uh, back to heaven. And during that period, that 40-day period, he continues to reassure uh, his disciples, reassure his followers that he has indeed been raised from the dead. They are the ones that must carry the message. You say, well, why is this so important? It's important because those people that witnessed the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that witnessed the experience after his resurrection, they are the ones that have to carry the message. So they must be thoroughly convinced, no doubts, no questions, no reservations, uh, no misunderstandings. They must be thoroughly convinced in order to write about uh, the, the details of his resurrection. So in the book of Acts, we, this is kind of our basic text for this in Acts chapter 1. Uh, where the letter is sent through uh, Theophilus uh, from Luke. And we look at that in chapter 3. Speaking of Jesus, it says, To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many, and I'm emphasizing that word, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, infallible, indisputable, things that cannot be contested, absolute proof 
that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Now, we've, we've rehearsed some of the many sightings of Jesus Christ, the interactions that he had with his disciples, interaction that he had with many of his followers. And I think it's well documented. It's well documented those experiences after his resurrection. But this becomes the game changer, if you will, in the plan of salvation. Never has there been anything like this before. In the Old Testament, uh, in, in the book of the law, in the, in the five books of the Bible, in the prophets, never has there been anything like this. It changed the plan of salvation forever. And, and the big place, you, you, you see this happening when Jesus uh, had the Passover meal with his, with his disciples and instituted the body and blood of Christ. That was the beginning of a change. That was the beginning of a change that would change the elements of Passover forever. The resurrection, the resurrection created an entire new language a new discourse, a new discussion, a new expectation. The resurrection of Jesus Christ set the goal. It was Paul's goal. Out of all of his preaching, out of all of his knowledge, out of all of his wisdom, out of all the churches that he started, his goal was to be a part of of the resurrection of the dead at all cost. That was his goal, pressing toward the mark for the prize, for the high calling in Christ Jesus. What was he talking about? He wanted to be a part of the resurrection. Jesus Christ set the model, set the standard. But in order for that message to be one that would resonate with humanity, those disciples had to be skilled in carrying the message through actually having witnessed Jesus Christ in his resurrected body. So that's why it's important. That's why it's so important. Many infallible proofs. What were some of those? Well, they witnessed, they witnessed him, they witnessed him in his resurrected body. They saw his hands, they saw his feet, they saw the bruises and and scars from the crown of thorns in his head. Uh, he was able to talk with them, to eat with them. He ate with them. He spoke with them. He conversated with them. He had to make sure that they believed it. And we've read all the accounts, or and not doing this section, but those of you that have read the, the, the writings of the, the Gospels, you, you've read those accounts of the witnessing of Jesus Christ. I want to ask you a question today. And this is for you. Uh, it's rhetorical. You don't have to write me a letter. You don't have to send me a text. You don't have to tell me at all. But I want to ask you a question. In as much as the text here in Acts chapter 1 talks about Jesus Christ, it talks about after his passion, but it talks about him proving himself by many infallible proofs. And we understand what that word infallible means. Those that cannot be contested, they're absolutely true. Uh, those that, that are substantiated, infallible, absolutely certain. My question to you today as I look into this camera, my question for you today is, what were the infallible proofs or infallible proof that convinced you, that convinced you of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, of the power of the resurrection? What was the infallible proof that convinced you uh, for Peter, uh, for Thomas, for the disciples, it was being able to see him, touch him, feel his hands with the wounds. But what was it for you that convinced you? Uh, Jesus asked a question of his disciples 
uh, on one of the one occasion when he asked him, he says, you know, I I I know what people are saying about me on the street, but I'm going to ask you the question: Who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? Are you convinced that I am the Christ? That I'm the son of the living God? That I am the Messiah? He asked a question of them in order that he might be sure that they knew. I ask you the question today. Yes, you can go back and tell the account and read the account of, of Mary and those and coming to the tomb and all of that. I understand that. Uh, you can read the Emmaus Road account. I understand that. You can read all the other accounts. You can read the account where uh, Jesus spoke to them uh, when they were on the ship and when they were fishing and had been toiling all night. You, you, can, you can read all of that. That's fine. That's not what I'm talking about. That's great reading. That's great reading. Historical fact. Biblical fact. But what was the infallible proof in your life? And I hope each one of you that are watching or listening to me today will spend some time there. What was it that convinced you of the resurrection of Jesus Christ? What was it that convinced you that Jesus Christ is alive forevermore? What was it? that convinced you that Christ was the resurrection and the life. What was it? Was it a miraculous healing? Could have been. I don't know. You know your life. But I think it's important for us sometimes to reflect on those things. You read the Bible. Yes, we can all read. But what was it that convicted you? What was it that was infallible? that beyond the shadow of a doubt convinced you that your Lord and Savior was Jesus Christ. And he did rise from the grave. He rose from the dead. What was it that convinced you? What was it that convinced you of the infallible word of God, of Jesus Christ? That's important. Because sometimes we become so... Uh, caught up, if you will, in the rhythms and the moves of, of our church congregations and in the songs and in the dancing and the praising and all of that. But what was it? What was it? Were you a Thomas? What was that thing that convinced you? Thomas's issue was, except I place my hand in, in, the, in his side and feel the nail prints in his hand, I won't believe. What was it that convinced you? What infallible thing, something that could not be disputed, that convinced you? And you have been convicted and convinced ever since. The Apostle Paul, it was his experience on the road to Damascus where he uh, met Jesus Christ met the power and the authority of Jesus Christ that brought him to his knees, that blinded him physically where he could not see, that the voice of God spoke to him. Jesus Christ challenged him, challenged his beliefs, challenged his thoughts, challenged his theology. But what was it that convinced you? I know the, the great account uh, in the Old Testament of Isaiah when he saw God for what he, in, 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 in his deity. And he saw him and he saw him sitting on a throne and high and lifted up and, and he saw all of the majesty around God. What was it that convinced you? What experience in your life? Was it reading your Bible? that convinced you? Was it a miracle that happened in your life that convinced you? I think that's important for you to really reflect on that. Was it receiving the indwelling 
of the Holy Ghost? Was it the baptism in Jesus' name? What was it that was so compelling that it changed your thoughts? It changed your life. It changed your lifestyle. What was that thing in your life? So when we look at, at, at the scripture, when it talks about uh, those, during those 40 days, that he made himself visible by many infallible proofs, those that witnessed the empty tomb, John and Peter, those that came to the tomb, looked in, no body, saw the head wrappings, saw the garments, Jesus was gone. The fact that it was witnessed by the angel, that the stone was rolled away, they showed him the place where Jesus was laying or had been laid. Infallible proof. What was it? What is it in your life today? Yes, you are a believer in Jesus Christ. You, you've been baptized, all of those things. I understand that. But what was it that, what was it that really was that thing or series of things that happened that thoroughly convinced you that Jesus Christ is real, that he rose from the dead, that he is indeed the Son of God, that he is a Savior of the world, that he is alive today and forevermore. What was it? When did it happen? Sometimes it's good to go back and to reflect on those things that turned your life around. Yes, you're a disciple today. You tell the story today. You share with others today. You are a proselyte. You're out recruiting others. But what was it that convicted you? Maybe it didn't happen all at one time. It didn't happen in one day. It didn't happen in one church service. It didn't happen in one prayer. It didn't happen after reading the Bible one time. But what was it? that thing in your life that today you'll stand for, you'll endure hardship. As Jesus says, uh, those that endure till the end, the same shall be saved. You're willing to endure. You're willing to take on life's challenges, to take on life's problems because you know your risen Lord the Spirit of God is with you, and he died for your sins, rose again. He took on the cross. He shed his blood for you, but he's alive now and forevermore. But you didn't always think that way. You were not always convicted. It was a matter of going to church. It was a matter of singing songs, but one day you met Jesus Christ. What was it? What was it? One of the followers of Jesus Christ said, Oh, my, my Lord and my God, I recognize who you are. When did you have that experience? During these 40 days that Jesus is walking the earth after his resurrection, during that period, that's where he was convincing people that he rose from the dead. The earth witnessed it. The earth quaked. The graves opened. Dead people came out at his resurrection. Infallible proof that is recorded. But what was the infallible thing that you recognized, that you recognized, that convinced you that Jesus Christ is alive, that he is real? He took the time of 40 days to convince people. Roman soldier was convinced. Surely this was 
son of God. The Roman soldier was convinced. Nicodemus was convinced. Joseph of Arimathea, convinced. Many others convinced because of what they saw that could not be attributed to anything else but the power of God. What was it with you? What was it with you? You say, why is that important? It's important because unless you are convinced, you'll not be able to have the experience of the power of the resurrection. Jesus returns. You must be convinced. It's not just a saying. It's not just in theory. It's not just in a song. You must be convinced that he is your Lord, he is your God, and he has been raised from the dead. Everything hinges on this. He changed the songs that we sing. He changed the conversations that we have. He changed the, the expectation that we have. He changed our perspective on death. He changed our perspective on aging. He changed our perspective on the things that can take our lives away. He changed our perspective on diseases. The power of the resurrection. Everything hinges on it. Everything hinges on it. Those that have been dead for hundreds of years, their fate depends on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Is it important? Yes. One day Christ is coming back. He's going to return. And he will return for those that have died in him that they might have eternity with him. It's important. It's important for all of us. That's why this period is so important. Don't take it lightly. Your future depended on Jesus Christ coming out of the grave, and it still depends on it. There's nothing else. You say, oh, I love the commandments. I love the commandments so much, and I believe in commandments. Commandments are wonderful. Commandments are are, are, are there for you and me. But the power of Jesus Christ, the power over death, the power of the resurrection is altogether a different category. Jesus Christ mastered death. When Jesus was asked by religious leaders, they asked him, we would see a sign from you validating and substantiating what you're telling us. We would see a sign from you, a sign that he gave them was a resurrection. As, as Jonah was in the whale's belly, three days and three nights. So still the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth, three days, three nights. And the inference there was he'll be there, but he's not going to stay. He's really pointing to the resurrection when he comes out. So everything, the resurrection made everything new. Our hope, our expectation, our dreams, our songs, our prayers anticipating, everything depended on the resurrection. As Paul said so aptly, if Christ be not risen, our sermons have to change. If there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not raised. If Christ is not raised, we have no hope. 40 days of infallible proofs is about the hope that you and I have today because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. What infallible proof convinced you 
of the power, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It may have been 50 years ago. Doesn't matter. That changed your life forever. That gave you hope that you did not have before. 40 days, fallible proofs. I ask you the personal question. You can go back through your memory, go back through your notes, or maybe sit down and write some things to bring back to your thoughts. That event in your life, that scripture in your life, those experiences in your life that were infallible in convincing you that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Because he rose from the dead, I have hope in the power of the resurrection as well. Thank you uh, for sharing time with me today. This may be something that you haven't thought about. The infallible proofs for those of Jesus' time, those proofs that convinced beyond a doubt that he rose from the dead. But we're required to make that same decision that Jesus Christ convinced me, the Word convinced me, Christ touched my thoughts. The Spirit of God brought me alive to see that He is alive. Glory to God, Jesus Christ is alive. And he's our hope today. Hope you're excited about it. Uh, we have a bit more than a week and a half or two before the 40 days are up and Jesus Christ ascends back to heaven. This is an exciting time. And the time after that, because the next 10 days after that, he sends the Holy Ghost. So he made promises. He kept all of his promises. That's one of the infallible proofs. He keeps his promises. God bless all of you today. Thank you so much for this time that you spent. Uh, you have many choices and many options. I appreciate the time that you share with, with us here uh, during these times. I pray that God will continue to bless you and your families. Spend some time, if you will, Spend some time. Ask yourself the question, what infallible proof convinced me that Jesus Christ rose from the dead? What was it in your life? What experience? How long did you struggle with that? How much effort was it for you to get that understanding and become convicted? And now it is a central part of your life Everything hinges on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father and eternal God, we thank you today for your mercy and thank you for your goodness. Thank you, God, for these 40 days post-resurrection. Thank you uh, that you uh, put evidence in the Word of God for us to see what happened during those 40 days that impacts us today in the written word, the preached word, and everything that pertains to the power of the Holy Ghost, Jesus Christ, through his resurrection. I ask God that you will continue to be with us. These prayers I ask in Jesus' name. Now, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. God bless all of you.